Hello, this is Dr. Raglan, Dean of Zombie Hunter University. Today we look at flaming wraiths. Flaming wraiths appear in the orange zones around Fort Pastor and all zones farther east in Fairview. Like all flaming bosses, flaming wraiths are stronger, faster versions of their non-flaming cousins. The same hunting strategies apply. However, chances of success are considerably diminished as evidenced by a look at some statistics. A flaming wraith has 30,000 health points, twice as many as a normal wraith. It runs slightly faster and inflicts 150 damage per hit, almost twice as much as a wraith. In other words, it will take you twice as long to kill a flaming wraith, while it will take the flaming wraith half as long to kill you. Therefore, we can roughly say that a flaming wraith hunt is four times more difficult than a regular wraith hunt. How are students to compensate? Better weapons is one solution. We always recommend using a weapon with enough firepower to theoretically kill your target in two minutes. However, few weapons can do this to a flaming wraith. There are a couple of rifles and pistols, a handful of chainsaws, and several machine guns. Many of these are limited edition or unique items, very expensive and hard to obtain. No shotguns or melee weapons fit the bill, and as always, we eschew grenade launchers because they do not focus their firepower on a specific target, which is what you need when you're hunting a boss. With so few weapons to level the playing field, students need to have their stats in place before taking on flaming wraiths. You need agility, armor, and endurance in order to survive long enough to kill the wraith before it kills you. Assuming undergraduate students cannot afford an expensive minigun and do not have their build sufficiently developed to take on a flaming wraith, the best solution is a speed boost, which increases speed by 35%. In this video, we see Nahum Gardner, a level 83 student. That's fairly advanced, but his stats are not optimized for the rifle he's using. His accuracy falls short of reliable on-screen aim. This puts him in a position not dissimilar to that faced by many lower-level students. Yet, as you can see, he does very well, not because of any particular skill, but simply because of the speed boost. The first thing to note is that Nahum Gardner can outrun the Flaming Wraith. He does not need to dodge and weave. This allows him to retreat in a straight line, which means that the flaming wraith will follow in a predictable path, allowing him to shoot at it even when it's off screen. Although not necessary, we prefer walking down the yellow line in the middle of the road because it can be used as a sight, in a sense, to help aim at the unseen flaming wraith. And of course, also the flaming wraith glows, so when it's at the edge of the screen, you can tell where it is even before its body appears. Wherever you prefer to walk, in the middle of the street or on the sidewalk, try to be consistent. You will have to circumvent the area multiple times, and after a while, you will start to anticipate the roadblocks and narrow pathways left by cars and trash cans, etc. Nahum is using a rebellion rifle. This is a unique item that cannot be looted in Fairview, but it's not much more effective than a VS Vinterez rifle or an Alpha Bull revolver in terms of damage per second, so either of those less expensive weapons can work for students. We recommend rifles because their greater accuracy requires fewer stats, but even a revolver can do the job when it's optimized. We should note that long-range rifles are preferable for sniping at flaming wraiths at a distance, but with a speed boost, that advantage is not really necessary. Close-quarter rifles like the Rebellion and the Vinterez will do the job. Using a Rebellion rifle, it takes Nahum well over 10 minutes to kill the flaming wraith although we have shortened the video. Toward the end, Nahum is able to switch to his corpse grinder chainsaw in order to finish the job. He can do this because the flaming wraith is weakened and easier to stun. Also, the flaming wraith is a very fast opponent. Consequently, while pursuing you on multiple circuits around the block, it will outrun most of the aggro, giving you a chance to face your target one-on-one. -on -one. The chainsaw will deliver much more damage per second than the rifle. Also, it saves on ammunition. In fact, if you're lucky enough to trap the wraith inside a fenced area, you could kill it using only the chainsaw. Assuming you're not going to be using drug enhancements, how can you kill a flaming wraith? Let's look at some methods, some weapons you can use. First, the Hammerhead 47 Assault Rifle, which is our preferred weapon for hunting flaming wraiths. There are two reasons for this. One, it has enough damage per second to do the job in under two minutes. 
two, it's less inaccurate than heavy machine guns and miniguns, so there's a better chance of hitting the target. Even so, you can see in this video that I tend to fire in short bursts when the flaming wraith is close instead of simply spraying bullets non-stop because I'm waiting for the wraith to get into range where my bullets are likely to hit it instead of wasting them on empty air. I should also note that assault rifles have a lower firing speed than heavy machine guns and miniguns, but they inflict more damage per hit, which means that less ammunition is necessary to kill the target. The lower firing speed does provide less knockback, but the knockback from the assault rifle is enough to provide protection from aggro if you're careful. After several minutes, which we have edited, the aggro thins out and the flaming wraith begins to weaken. So I switch to a corpse shooter revolver, which inflicts less damage per second than the hammerhead, but is more likely to deliver all that DPS to the target thanks to greater accuracy. This is the strategy we recommend regardless of what combination of weapons students use during a flaming wraith hunt. Begin with a machine gun, which will protect you from aggro and inflict as much DPS as possible. Then finish up with a rifle, revolver, or chainsaw. Any of these three will reliably deliver all of their DPS to the flaming wraith. Now let's look at some other weapon possibilities. Here we see Yuki-08 using a Street Dog 99 submachine gun. This offers knockback and DPS equivalent to the hammerhead, so it meets our basic minimum requirements for killing the target in theoretically under two minutes. Students developing critical builds without the strength necessary to equip assault rifles or heavy machine guns should use this weapon. We are not quite as enthusiastic about the street dog as we are for the hammerhead because of the nature of submachine guns, which are more dependent on critical hit for their DPS. I'm going to round off the numbers to avoid getting bogged down in decimal points, but a submachine gun fires almost 9 rounds per second. With the critical chance stat maxed out, approximately 2 of those rounds will be critical hits that deliver 5 times as much DPS as a regular shot. This means that those two critical hits inflict more damage than the other seven rounds combined. Now, if you're firing into a crowd of aggro surrounding a wraith, there's a good chance that most of those critical hits will land on other zombies, wasting most of the damage. So even though the street dog expends as much damage per second as the hammerhead, there's a chance that much less DPS will actually be inflicted on the flaming wraith unless you can isolate it from the surrounding aggro. Next up, we have the Vulcan minigun used by Taki. He's a level 67 student with almost no stat points invested in reloading or accuracy. So he's a little bit at a disadvantage there. Fortunately for him, the Vulcan's damage per second is just shy of a hammerhead and the street dog, but it's a completely different weapon thanks to firing speed, a little over 12 rounds per second. This knockback is very useful for protection from aggro, but it comes at a price. It takes a ton of ammunition to kill a flaming wraith, so much that unless all your inventory slots are full, there's a good chance you might run out before you've killed the wraith. Also, like all miniguns, the Vulcan has ultra-low accuracy, which means those bullets will spray in a wide cone-shaped pattern, hitting zombies left and right, but not necessarily hitting your primary target. We recommend the Vulcan, therefore, only for students concerned about being overwhelmed by aggro. Finally, we look at the use of rifles with very high accuracy. In this video, Lisa CT is using a corpse piercer. This is a unique item, but it's not much different from an iron sight and only slightly better than a 577 Rex, the latter of which is relatively inexpensive. The advantage of the very high accuracy rifles is they need fewer stats in order to get perfect on-screen accuracy and also to have very reliable or even possibly perfect off-screen accuracy Delivering 134 damage per second, the corpse piercer needs at least 3 minutes and 43 seconds to kill a flaming wraith. Its very slow firing speed, 1 round per second, is completely inadequate for dealing with aggro. Nevertheless, its long range accuracy makes it highly suitable for sniping a flaming wraith from across the screen or even off screen. We pick up the video at a point after Lisa CT has softened her target with a high powered machine gun. At that point, while continuing to dodge around the block to outrun the aggro, she switches to the rifle and picks away at the flaming wraith one shot at a time, a slow process of attrition, but much more economically viable than continuing to spray dozens and dozens of bullets every second. Keep your eyes open and you will note a useful strategy. Students should try to squeeze through tight spaces that make it difficult for aggro to follow. This way, more time can be spent dealing directly with the boss being hunted in a one-on-one -on -one confrontation. 
This is how it's done. We hope these techniques are useful to you. We'll be back soon. Thanks for listening. (laughs) 